Welcome to this podcast on streaks. Streaks are one of 10 melanoma-specific structures with a specificity of 99% and an odds ratio of almost 6 for melanoma. Streaks are defined as linear pigmented extensions that emanate directly from the tumor and always extend from the tumor towards normal, uninvolved skin. They correspond with the radial growth of the tumor. Both radial streaming and pseudopods are considered to be streaks. Radial streaming is one type of streak. Radial streaming consists of radial, almost parallel, linear lines at the periphery of the lesion. This is an example of a spitz nevus manifesting radial streaming around its entire perimeter. Pseudopods are also considered to be streaks. They consist of linear extensions at the periphery of the tumor. However, unlike radial streaming, the distal end of the line in a pseudopod culminates with a bulbous ending. This bulbous ending has to have a width that is at least twice the width of the line or stalk on which it resides. As is the case with any streak, these finger-like or pseudopod-like extensions are found along the lesion's perimeter and always radiate towards uninvolved normal skin. Here is an example of a melanoma displaying pseudopods. The arrow points to a linear extension or streak that is emanating from the tumor. This linear extension consists of a stalk with a bulbous ending. Notice that the bulbous ending has a width that is more than twice the width of the linear stalk from which it originates. This is the characteristic morphology of a pseudopod. This melanoma reveals both radial streaming and pseudopods, as highlighted by the arrows. Both of these structures are considered under the general heading of streaks. On histopathology, streaks correlate with confluent junctional nests of pigmented melanocytes. Streaks can emanate directly from a solid tumor mass or from a network at the periphery of the tumor. The schematic on the left shows streaks coming off a tumor mass. The structures labeled A, B, and C are all considered to be streaks. Structures labeled D is not considered a streak. It is a peripheral globule, and we will discuss the significance of this structure later. The schematic on the right shows streaks emanating from an atypical pigment network. The line labeled F and H are considered streaks. Lines coming off a network are considered streaks if they have at least the same thickness as the atypical network from which they arise, they are linear and have no branching points, and they do not taper and fade as they progress towards the periphery. The line labeled G is not a streak because the line is thinner than the network from which it originates. Line I represents a peripheral globule, the significance of which we will discuss shortly. Streaks of the network are depicted in the images on the left. Here you see the streaks arising from an atypical network. They have the same thickness as the atypical network from which they arise. They are linear and non-branching, and they do not taper off towards the periphery. The image on the right is that of a reticular nevus. The lines seen here are not streaks since they are not linear, they have branching points, they are not connected to an atypical network, and they taper off towards the periphery. It is important to differentiate pseudopods from peripheral globules. The bulbous end of a pseudopod is connected to the main tumor mass via a stalk, as can be seen in the lesion on the left. In the schematic, the structures labeled G and H are not considered pseudopods since the width of the bulbous ending is not at least twice that of the stalk. Peripheral globules, on the other hand, have no stalk, but instead have a space separating the globule from the main tumor mass, as can be seen in the lesion on the right. It appears that peripheral globules and streaks are manifestations of the same biologic process, namely radial growth. Peripheral globules present around the entire perimeter of the lesion of a nevus are indicative of an actively growing nevus. If such nevi is sequentially followed over time, they will symmetrically enlarge, the globules will become sparser, and eventually the nevus will enter a stage of senescence at which point the globules will no longer be visible and the nevus will manifest a reticular or homogeneous pattern. Similarly, spitz nevi with pseudopods, if sequentially followed, will enlarge in a symmetric fashion. Once the nevus enters senescence, the pseudopods are no longer visible and the nevus will usually manifest a homogeneous pattern. Streaks are most commonly encountered in spitz nevi and in melanoma. Regular streaks are defined as streaks present around the entire perimeter of the lesion, and regular streaks are diagnostic of pigmented spitz nevi. Irregular streaks are those that are found focally at the periphery of a tumor. Irregular streaks are one of ten important melanoma-specific structures that that every dermoscopist should be able to identify. Structures resembling streaks can on occasion be seen in lesions other than spitz nevi and melanoma. Rarely, streak-like structures can be seen in seborrheic keratosis and basal cell carcinoma. 
He has a separate keratosis revealing streak-like structures. These structures are in fact ridges and not streaks. How can one differentiate between a true streak and a streak-like structure seen in a seborrheic keratosis? It is important to remember that touching the lesion can provide important diagnostic information. If the lesion has a stuck-on appearance and a rough texture, then the likely diagnosis is seborrheic keratosis. In addition, the clinical view with side lighting can help one to see the surface topography, which can also help differentiate a seborrheic keratosis from a melanocytic lesion. Other techniques, such as the dermoscopic wobble test described by Dr. Ralph Brown, can also assist in differentiating a seborrheic keratosis from a melanocytic lesion. However, if one is still in doubt as to whether the lesion is a seborrheic keratosis or not, one should resort to a biopsy for definitive diagnosis. Here is a basal cell carcinoma revealing structures that resemble streaks at the periphery. These streak-like structures are highlighted by the black arrow. In addition, this lesion has streaks that are present towards the inner part of the tumor. Note that the streak-like structures by the asterisk are radiating towards the tumor itself. This is a feature not seen in true streaks encountered in melanocytic lesions. In basal cell carcinoma, the streaks tend to be fuzzy and out of focus. Some of them will radiate towards the tumor mass. They tend to converge towards a focal area at the periphery creating the so-called leaf-like structure, and the geometric central portion of the lesion is often white or hypopigmented and structureless. In contrast, a true streak seen in a melanocytic tumor tends to be sharper in focus. It always radiates away from the tumor mass towards uninvolved skin. It tends to converge towards the geometric center of the lesion, and the center of the lesion is normally pigmented or hyperpigmented and has a blue-white veil. The lesion on the left is a basal cell carcinoma with fuzzy streaks. Notice that some of the streaks, as highlighted by the arrow, are radiating towards the tumor itself. Also notice how the streaks are converging focally at the periphery, creating the so-called leaf-like structure. Also notice that the central portion of the tumor is hypopigmented. In contrast, the lesion on the right is a melanoma. The streaks in this melanoma are sharper in focus, they all radiate away from the tumor, they converge towards the geometric central part of the lesion, and the center of the lesion is hyperpigmented and has a blue-white veil. Here it is important to highlight that errors in clinical judgment and diagnosis between basal cell carcinoma and melanoma will not have any bearing on ultimate management. In other words, a biopsy will be performed irrespective of the correct or incorrect clinical diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma or melanoma. This concludes this podcast on streaks. We welcome you to visit the other melanoma-specific podcasts available through the International Dermoscopy Society.